All right, as we continue to get you different voices on how the budget is being seen across the board, joining us Ashwin Sapra, uh, who heads the pharma practice, I believe, at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas. Uh, very good evening, uh, Mr. Sapra. And uh, <clears throat> your thoughts on uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman uh, giving a be all and please all budget, I believe. That's what the sense we are getting, according to you, from where your vantage, how does it look? Thank you for having me on your show today. Uh, I think from a healthcare perspective, the past uh, two budgets were focused on developing healthcare infrastructure. This budget is, is, is focused on developing infrastructure in terms of uh, intellectual capital and intellectual property. Uh, the reason I use both these terms is because one is one focuses on is on uh, more research and development uh, in the pharma sector, uh, more collaboration between the public run uh, labs, which is the ICMR labs and the private sector that it's envisaged. That is going to result in, in I'm hopeful, in, in the creation of a lot more blockbuster drugs. Uh, you know, look at what we've done in terms of developing the first intranasal COVID vaccine recently, which was approved. So I think that's a very pos good positive sign. The second aspect is development of the intellectual cap, uh, the, the, the intellectual capital and manpower. I think with the setting up of the new nursing institutes, I think that is going to really, really help in, in, in plugging the gaps in terms of manpower required at all the healthcare establishments. So that's a very welcome uh, right. uh, um, point <clears throat> of mine. So it was not uh, there in the budget speech that was delivered by the finance minister, but Mr. Sapra, could you find something in the finer print uh, that subsequently came about uh, how the government uh, intends to tackle this uh, China plus one strategy of the world community when it comes to shifting the global supplies out of China and possibly into India, pharma being an important aspect of, uh, uh, of, of India's export architecture, so to say. Are you, are you getting to understand something from the finer print as to whether the government has given some uh, SOPs to healthcare, specifically to pharma, when it comes to competing with the Chinese? So, uh, that was my next point. Thus far, that is, that is a slight gripe which I have. I feel that it's not there. Maybe it's there in the super fine print. Uh, but I think there is, uh, from what the, the industry reaction that I'm getting, uh, in terms of incentives for domestic manufacturing, you know, which would then uh, help us move from China back, back into India in terms of our, our API manufacturing. Uh, I couldn't see much. It wasn't really, uh, it didn't find any mention in the Honorable Finance Minister's speech. Uh, but that said, there is uh, an increase in some financial outlay uh, from about 100 crores to 100, uh, 1250 crores. Uh, maybe that will find its way into some of the incentive schemes. Uh, maybe there is a super fine print. Uh, I think as we, as we dissect the budget deeper, it may come out. But I didn't see any of that. So that is one... Uh, a gripe which I have. Okay, and my next question would be, the budget specifically talks about uh, partnerships uh, between the government-led uh, uh, ICMR and private sector in terms of research on, uh, you know, uh, healthcare specifically in the backdrop of the pandemic, uh, the situation we are seeing on viruses, for example. So you think that's a plus with the government collaborating with the private sector or making its facilities available to the private sector for this kind of cutting edge research in biosciences? Absolutely. I think, look, we, we have the intellectual capital in our country. We've got the best research scientists. Uh, a lot of our government laboratories are also very well equipped, uh, if I may say so. Uh, definitely, I think if, if this opens up, there are plenty of opportunities for a lot of uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, it's a very positive outlook. It has its pluses and minuses, how it is going to uh, uh, sort of uh, translate into how the, the, the logistics of it. That's a separate issue. But yes, as a, as a point of principle, it is definitely a very positive move. All right. Uh, also, uh, one bit with you as a lawyer, you might not have liked this, that the finance minister announced that 39,000 compliances have been... Uh, uh, you know, removed and about 4,000 laws taken away. So I think that that leaves you with less job, less less of work. <laughs> well, you know, a lawyer's job is never, uh, a lawyer's never short of jobs, let me put it that way. Uh, but I think the this is on a larger policy issue. Uh, and I think the policy 
today the law that governs our sector the finance uh, the the pharmaceutical sector is the drugs and cosmetics act which is a pre independence legislation yeah uh, you know we are now uh, you know in 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 a situation where that law really doesn't cover all of today's uh, issues that are there so i think there has to be a radical policy shift right uh, the and i know that you know i i i know that there is there is a law in the making but i think it has to be a balanced law uh, right whether some compliances have to be taken out and that has to be balanced with additional compliance <coughs> again it has to be a balanced document which should right. come it, out with a lot of discourse with the industry all right a balanced document according to ashwin sapra partner cyril amarchand mangaldas uh, in their pharma and healthcare practice so thank you so much for joining us on that note we'll take a short break thank you so much